Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. A shot of entertainment to the head. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. Let's just cut the damn music. <laughs> After what I just went through here in the last t- five minutes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Ever Lee Show podcast. I am the Ever Lee. I want to give a shout out to everyone who follows me on social media and right here on Podcast City Network. Well, tonight on my Ever Lee Show Facebook page. I was having some technical difficulties, multi-streaming on Podcast Network Twitch page and right here on the Facebook page. So I decided to go with doing it on my Everly Show Facebook page, probably because uh, Podcast Network was used this weekend because of the Super Bowl final score. <laughs> but other than that, got a great show lined up for everyone tonight here on the program. I have right there, you can see on the screen, and those listening, I have on the line right now, laughing at my screw-ups, the Gold Rush, Solomon Stone, is back on the program, and I want to welcome back onto the program. How you doing? (laughs) Good, man. How are you? Well, I was doing pretty good until those uh, technical difficulties, but um, (laughs) other than that... (laughs) <laughs> it sucks <laughs> it does it it sucks sometimes you know that you plan stuff and it don't work out half the time oh yeah you need to technology mm-hmm. technology we're in 23 yeah. things should be a lot smoother yeah yeah things could be a lot smoother they they definitely could be but um most of the time they're not. It's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. It's just things things don't work out normally like how how I usually plan, but when they do, they, they do work out and that's great. I mean a couple of weeks ago I had I had a screw up on a live show. Skype dropped a call on my guest. That's the worst fucking thing in the world, having having your guest being dropped <clears throat> because of Skype, you know. All right. <laughs> uh, did you call him back? Yeah, they they called. Thank God, thank God, the, the other person that was on there on the call, he ended up calling calling back, and we got him hooked. You know, hooked right back up on there and called right back. But I left it in there because it was so funny on the edit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice little blooper there for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was it was it was hilarious just having that. I decided to keep it as I just said to myself, I can edit this out, but I'm going to keep it because it's just hilarious. This is gold right here because it's not going to happen again. It's not going right. to happen. So I you never know. Maybe you could uh, save it for a podcast edition of Botchamania. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could. Speaking of speaking of botchamania, aren't those aren't those hilarious? Oh, they're great, <laughs> dude. Those are my, some of my favorite videos. I honestly though, I haven't seen them in a while. It's just it's so hard to keep. Like I feel like the pages get shut down all the time. Mm-hmm. But uh, dude, gold. It is. It it's it's gold with a lot of the things that that they that they show on there because. How the hell do you screw something up? But it's easy. It's easy to screw something up, especially moves, because you put that trust in someone, and some of this right. stuff just happens randomly. You're wondering what the hell happened, right? Oh yeah, all the time, man. <laughs> uh, it's great. Just uh, I'm trying to think. Just something. Just oh man, I was at an event for uh, well, it's formerly known as. And PWA new breed, but it's now called Rising Action Wrestling. Um, dude, 
in the middle of the ring cutting a promo, right? And had no clue, but th- there was a, I guess maybe a start or a beginning of a hole in the middle of the ring under the canvas. And, you know, of course I would step into that hole and fall damn near all the way up to my neck in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. Not once. No, let me, let me add this. Not once, but twice, dude. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was twice. Not my, uh, not my best moment. That's for sure. Oh, man. But it was pretty funny. You know, the, Fallout crowd uh, got pretty good kick out of it. That's that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so oh, they... dude, yeah, dude. When it happened, dude. Uh, at first, I was so mad, dude. I was so pissed. <laughs> but, but afterwards, <laughs> like the second time, I was just like, "All right, man, let's wrap this up." Damn, it's I've done so many screw ups on this show here. I've have had so many because everything goes goes accordingly. And then stuff happens where things mess up here, things mess up there. The video lags. I got too many applications open on on my desktop like right now. And it's just, it's crazy because you don't expect stuff like that to happen. You definitely don't I know, expect man. anything like, like that to You got to close out those Pornhub tabs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that slows things down quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, speaking of Pornhub, there's that. Did you hear a while back ago Pornhub was wanting to buy that stadium in Miami and wanting to re, rename it to the, the uh, Bang Bros Stadium? <laughs> the, what? No, but yeah, yeah, that the, was the, sweet. yeah. The this uh, adult entertainment company, I think it was Bang Bros. That they were wanting oh to God. buy this arena down in uh, Miami. There, wanting they were wanting to rename it the uh, BBCB, you know, or BBBC. <laughs> oh my God! And you know what that means? Abbreviated right well, there. I'm sure that would go over well. Well, I don't know. It's Miami, so you never know. <laughs> we'll down to Miami. <laughs> Yeah, got a comment on here already on the uh, chat here. Charlie Charlie uh, Kramer says, "Where did you get your name, Sullivan Stone? I heard a promoter tried to get get you to be called something else." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Charlie! But he's he's actually known as the cult classic Charles Crane. Don't let him fool you. Oh, really? um. Yeah, it's kind of a little inside thing with us. He used to, he actually still to this day calls me Avi Abraham. And apparently I do all kinds of shit. So shout out to Charlie. <laughs> I'll use it someday. Someday I will use that. <laughs> that's great. That is, that's great. I love it. But yeah, how, how did you, I never did get to ask you that the last time you were on. How did you get your name? How how did that come about? Because I know creating cre- creating a gimmick, creating a character, how did that name come about? How how did you get your name? Dude, um, I was just one of those things where I was just like, I literally just had a list of first and last names. It was just for hours. I was trying to, like, putting, you know, putting two, to, two together and I don't know, just came across that. I was like, ah, all right. You know, let's go for it. And just kind of stuck. But it, dude, it took forever. Like I had some of the dumbest names on there too. I remember, but I could have went with the easy route and went with Avi Abraham, but I'm stubborn. So. Right. Solomon Stone. Solomon Stone. I, I like it. I like it. I like the whole, I like everything. That I see from the promos to the matches that you do with with the everything that you got for for your whole whole gimmick, whole persona and everything. I, I love it because I get a kick out of the promos because me and me and my me and my friend David were discussing that the other day. He said, who are you, who are you gonna have on? Uh, David C. Russell from Deathmatch Russell Podcast. He's like, who are you gonna have on yeah. next week? I said, I'm gonna have Solomon Stone back on. He's like, oh man. He's like, you see his stuff. All he does is cut promos. 
I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love, I'm i a promo guy. I love promos, man. Yeah. The yeah. last one I did, I uh, actually had to call immigration on my my uh, maid. Her name is Maria, and she's still nowhere to be found, by the way. <laughs> but they hung up on me, dude. Really? Yeah, they hung up on me. No way. Yeah, and she's still she's still gone. Fold uh, the laundry is still not even folded. So, yep, Maria, if you're out there, we are looking for you, and immigration would like to speak with you. <laughs> Damn, that's that's yeah. crazy, man. That's serious nuts. business, dude. Yeah, I don't mess around with some of the laundry. Yeah, no, you don't, man. You don't. Yeah, dude, stuff's piling up now. It's been weeks. Damn. You and you can't get anyone you can't get anyone to come over and do it? I could, but you know I have hired help for that. And you know, so you gotta pay the consequences, whether it's come and finish the job or get deported. So she's gotta take her pick. Either way, we will find her. So I'm stick I'm sticking with that. Putting my foot down. And trust me, there will be an Amber Alert coming out very soon. <laughs> You're serious, man. You're serious. Oh, I'm dead, serious, man. <laughs> Damn. Maria, you better get back. You better get back. Yeah. One or two choices. There is, there is like The Rock said in the rundown, there is no option C. No. <laughs> Not at all. Speaking of Speaking of laundry, Solomon. My wife did some laundry over the weekend. She asked me, she said, what do you want washed? And I said, wash, wash this, wash that, throw that in the wash, throw my, throw my jeans in the wash. She said, okay. A few minutes, hour, a couple hours later, she didn't even want to talk to me. It was like almost she was trying to avoid me. And <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to go to the store. So I said, where's my wallet? And she said, it's on your dresser I said okay and she said don't get mad at me I said what'd you do I said, don't get mad at me I said, what did you do you won't promise you won't I was like what did you do she said she threw the pants in and she didn't even check I had my wallet in there and you know what happened to my wallet <laughs> how dare she everything wow. that wasn't paper dissolved or came out soggy like a noodle and I could not read yeah. shit. <laughs> That's devastating, dude. Yeah, yeah. I can. It read... takes a lot of walls to dry out too. Yeah, it takes it takes forever. Stuff's probably stiff like cardboard now, man. Stuff's probably stiff <laughs> like cardboard. <laughs> right? Yeah. See, you know, if you would just hire yourself a good maid, Latina, preferably, it would all be done. Just not Maria. Nobody by the name of Maria. <laughs> I'll make sure. I'll make sure I don't hire anyone with the name Maria. I'll make sure I don't, I don't do that. List or back page. I'm sure you'll find some good help there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it'd probably upset my wife. But then again, she'd yeah. Like, you know what? I don't have to do it now. I don't have to. You'd do probably it. be camping out in the backyard somewhere, so you probably don't want to do that. No. <laughs> no, I, I probably wouldn't want to. Some strange lady coming into the house there, and my wife freak out. It's like, what is she doing in here? <laughs> it's like, oh, throwing clothes in. Yeah. You're like, yeah, she called me up. <laughs> Calling up and stuff. It's like, <laughs> Everett, who's this Who's this person in her house? It's like, oh, that's uh, the maid I just hired, man. It's like... <laughs> I was like, um, be sure to remind her to pick up her kid at you know at uh, at four, you know, when out of daycare. <laughs> <laughs> that she'd flip the she'd flip the shit out, man. <laughs> she would. <laughs> man, hey, you know what? As long as you got the WWE network on your phone, I think you'd be good for at least a day or two, right? Yeah, I definitely Maybe. I definitely would. There. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely I definitely would. Speaking. Speaking of uh, WWE Network, you catch the Royal Rumble last week? Oh, yeah, dude. 
Yeah. What, Dude, what, that was by far one of the best rumbles in forever, dude. I can't even remember a, a better one in my recent memory. Mm-hmm. A lot of people's been saying that. They said this has been one of, that was one of the best Royal Rumbles in a few years. And it was it it started out pretty good, believe it or not. I did enjoy the uh, Roman Reigns and King Corbin Falls Count Anywhere match. I did enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, it, it they had some they had some great spots in that match. I I love the table spot, man. Twice through that damn table and then with the stuff yeah. on top of the table. God, and then the Usos with their spot they did, Jimmy or Jay coming up oh, the top. Know, of the, it's, it's like I I was sitting there watching it. I came off I came off my seat there because all of a sudden here comes one of the Usos. It's like whew, suicide throw themselves off. It's like shit. What the oh. hell, man? Yeah, that's pretty sweet, dude. Like honestly, I think the whole card, you know, from top to bottom was pretty pretty legit. It was pretty it was. good, man. It was, especially, especially when it came to the men's Royal Rumble, because with how long Brock was in there, but when, out of my dude, he was purple. <laughs> well, he was so purple by like fifteen, not even ten minutes, probably into that whole match. So you could just see it in his face. I'm like, dude, I freaking, I fucking feel you, dude. <laughs> but yeah, he. Yeah, he 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 got rid of some opponents there, but the one thing the one thing that got me was that he when he when Keith Lee got in the ring with him, man, you hear how loud that crowd popped, man, because people love Keith Lee, man. They they've been doing a great job with him. They've been Yeah, dude, that was that was a pretty cool moment between those two. Yeah, I wish they got a little bit more time with that, though. For sure. Oh yeah, I would. I'd would definitely. You you book Brock Lesnar versus Keith Lee. I I'm there, man. I am definitely there. I'm definitely there. Oh yeah. Because those those two guys, they can they can do some matches. They definitely they definitely can do some matches, and I definitely would be there for that to see Keith Lee and Brock Lesnar go up head to head against each other. That would be that'd be fantastic. Yeah. That would be. I he, love that. He's bigger than Brock too. Yeah, yeah. And he, Brock, I I can't believe Brock Lesnar, fucking German suplex his ass. <laughs> That's pretty damn strong. Oh, That's pretty damn strong, man. Come fly mm-hmm. back. Like Brock said, that's a big boy. <laughs> yeah. He he definitely is he definitely is a he definitely is a big boy man, but he's he is over in NXT, and I I love the charisma and everything that guy does in the ring. I definitely do. But yeah, I've been following him for a while. Yeah, he's he's great. He he's great. They get they get so many so much good talent in NXT. I was disappointed that not many NXT people showed up in the Men's Royal Rumble. I guess because I know, dude. I was, dude, I was waiting for Adam Cole to come out. Yeah. I think a lot of people were. My my nephew, he he's he marks out on Adam Cole. He's just just marks out on Undisputed Era. And he's like, yeah, he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And I said, no. I said, yeah. Drew McIntyre is going to win it. That's That was my pick. I wanted to see Drew McIntyre win it. And yeah, when when he he kicked, he claymored Lesnar out of the ring, I was like, I, I came off my seat again. I forgot how many times I came off my seat that night. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> And then, especially, yeah, dude, Brock sold that like a champ, dude. Yeah, he did. He did. The reaction, right? But by that, by you know, by the time he got that Claymore, dude, he was probably so ready to get the fuck out of there, too. Uh huh. Yeah, he. It's like it. He he probably thought in his head, "Damn, this is the most I wrestled in a in a." since 2019 or 20 like 2006 or something <laughs> yeah yeah the, back when he was a young pop yeah yeah i mean he he held his own he he does but oh, it's sure. just 
he he don't do long matches. He's got used to that. Go in one, two, three, done. Go home. That's yeah. That's all he's used to. But yeah, he was yeah. As the term, what is it there? He was starting to uh, swole up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was starting to swole up there. But the entry to number twenty-one that was amazing right there. I came on glue on that I one too. Night. That was yeah the moment of the night. Edge, the rated R superstar coming back after all this time, oh, yeah. man. Dude, like I, you know, you hear on the dirt sheets and all that stuff, like you know, certain stuff. Like I heard that, and I'm like, eh, yeah. And then he posted that picture of him kind of teasing with his like you know gear in his bag or whatever. I'm like no way, dude, it's old pick or whatever. <laughs> and he came out and was like, dude, I was flipping shit. <laughs> it was pretty sweet though, man. I was I was stoked. But dude, he's shredded now, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. He looks great. He does. He definitely did. He definitely does look great. Got a got a quote, another question in the chat right here from Hayden Hut Hutchinson Hutcher. No, oh, nah, this guy. Yeah, he said, "Ask he, Solomon." He What's that? Go ahead with the question. <laughs> he said, "How how does it feel to lose the uh, GLWA Tag Team Championship?" Well, first of all. Um, I didn't lose the tag team championship because I didn't get pinned. My tag team partner, Garrett Adams, is the one that lost the tag team championship for us. And two, you're just a weird ginger. So it doesn't even really matter because we're coming back for those titles. There you go. That's fair. It's very fair. Mm-hmm. Not too happy about it. Garrett knows that I'm still very upset about this. Right. Right. <laughs> You'll get the tag team titles back. You you will. No. You if I have to do it by myself, I will. But regardless, we're getting those back. Yeah. Even even if you have to even after if you have to pull Braun Strowman, but you're not gonna pull a kid out in the crowd for your partner, right? <laughs> No, see, I hate kids, and they're all pretty dumb. And all they want is money, and I'm not trying to give all of my money to children. So, no, I'd rather just do it by myself. Understandable. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. If you want things done, you got to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. If you want the job done, you got to do it yourself. You definitely do yeah. have to do it yourself. So. Hayden, I will see you later this month. Make sure you uh, spray some disinfectant on those titles, too. <laughs> that's that. That's gonna. That's gonna be. That's gonna be interesting to see, and that definitely is. But the rumble, Edge coming back, and Edge lasting as long as he has, and what. The program that he's going to be having with with Randy Orton, I mean, yeah, even the dirt sheets talked about that. Him having a match at Orton, I think that's good because him not being around in nine years and in having like his first official match back, someone with Randy Orton because Orton don't do nothing crazy. He don't do no suicide yeah. dives or anything like that. You know. Yeah. Well, plus, I mean, he's been it's someone he knows in the ring and everything too. I mean, they've worked each other probably a bazillion times. Yeah. And we're team champions together too. So yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I think it'll be. Yeah. It, it's going to be, it's going to be great just to see that. And just the card that's coming up there for mania. It's pretty good, but I, I, I enjoy see, I wonder, um, I'm sorry. I wonder where like AJ Styles was supposed to come into play with like, do you think he was supposed to have a match with either of those two? But now, like, I think he, like, blew out his shoulder or something in that match, didn't he? Yeah, he 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 took a spear. He took it to, uh, how would you say, he he took he took it the wrong way or something happened. And, yeah, threw his shoulder out. But AJ publicly came out and said, it's not Edge's fault. 
because I know like you know how you know how wrestling fans can be they can just you know it's just it's like your yeah, fault Edge. yeah your fault Edge it was your fault and he came out and said nope it wasn't his fault it just it, it's wrestling it happens people get hurt people get hurt yep. they do they do you're off the just, ask, just ask Garrett he knows all about that too <laughs> Yeah, it's just it it happens. It, it's wrestling, and people get bent out of shape about it, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. Like people get yeah. bent out about the Super Bowl halftime show this past weekend. Man, it's right, dude. All right, so I'll be honest, dude. I didn't. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> dude, I didn't watch football in so long. Really? But um, well, yeah, and of course, like you know, on Facebook it's like that. That's literally all I saw on my feed was Shakira and J Lo and this and this and that and everything about the game. I was like, shit, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just get all your info on Facebook, you know. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, pretty much. That's pretty much where you can get all your info at, right there. Yeah, you, you scroll up through your news feed. There, I laugh at the comments, and I, I feel like I need to mute half the conversations on there because of what people what they talk about the conversation that I see now from people I've known in the last few years is totally changed. And I say to myself, why are you putting attention post out there? <laughs> why? Yeah. That's exactly why? What it is too. why? I think I did when I was, a, when Facebook first, when I first joined Facebook back in 2009, there in that first year when I was young, I decided to put attention post out. And then I'd get reactions of like, oh, this is how you use it. Okay. It's like, wow. It's like, 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 comment. What's wrong? I, I hate, I hate attention post. Just, if yeah. you, need, you need attention. Go get a hug. Go find someone to hug. <laughs> yeah. Go find Bailey. Have her hug yet. Wait, yeah. she don't hug no more. <laughs> right. Get a hug from the T-Rex arms. Yeah. <laughs> or find Find Bob with bitch tits from Fight Club. Right. <laughs> That's Bob. That's Bob has bitch tits. <laughs> My favorite. That's a great. Yeah, great, great movie, man. Great movie. I I love that movie. I love that. Speaking of, speaking of movies, me and me and my wife the other night we saw Hobbs and Shaw. How was that? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's it was everything I expected from a spin-off show based on the universe of the Fast and Furious. I expected yeah. that. I what I expected happened. You seen the rock in there doing one liners and kicking ass and Jathan Stamen roundhouse and kick everyone across the room and then just dialogue going back back and forth between two characters was just amazing. It was everything I expected, nothing less, nothing more, and I enjoyed it. And I laugh at the thing that they made a big deal about Roman Reigns being in the movie. They're like, Roman Reigns is in the movie. He's in this. They explained it and hyped it up. He had this big role in the movie. You know how many times, you know, as Paul Heyman would say, spoiler alert, you know how many, you know how many scenes in minutes that guy was in the movie for <laughs> and then 30 seconds. He had about five scenes and in those five scenes in about two of them, he was standing in the background and in the other, what? the other scene, there's two other scenes where he was, the cameras up close on him and that was basically it. And he fought next to the rock there for a little bit and that was it. And I said, to Dang. myself. This is all this guy has. They built it up like he was going to have like this big dialogue with him. And it was just a big yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I that's what I definitely thought, too. Mm-mm. No, no. He was just standing in the background a couple of times. The only thing he probably said was, ooh, ah, when they were fighting. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's well, it. Of course he said that. Yeah, that's all. That's all he said. And I did. I didn't expect too much because that, I just said to my wife, I said, yeah, he had a big part, didn't he? <laughs> he, had a big right. part. he had a big part. It just, yeah. it, it put butts in the seat just to have him come out. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Definitely check that out. Speaking of Fast and Furious, did you see the trailer for the for the new one coming out in the summertime? Yeah, I did. I seen I seen the trailer for for the new one that's coming out though. But there's I only had one problem with that. There's one problem I had with the trailer. They was, couldn't see John Cena in it. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to figure out who Dom was fighting because I couldn't see him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was funny. Dude, like, honestly, though, I think John Cena actually looks pretty, pretty legit in the movie. So I don't know. It had my attention, so I, I might, I'm probably gonna check it out. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of hard to believe that that's his little brother. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I read. I was reading this thing today, or watching this video about about the details and stuff about the trailer. And Justin Lin, I, I think he's great. He he directed Tokyo Drift and the fourth one, the fifth, and the sixth one. He didn't direct the seventh or eighth one. And he's coming back to do the finish up the ninth and the do the, the, the tenth one. He mentioned, he said pretty much for the idea for the ninth one was he's pretty much went everywhere he can think of. I mean, they pretty much have. It's... And then he thought about how Dom always said in the movie, family, we're family. So he got to thinking, yeah. he said, you know what? Let's focus on family. Let's focus on that sibling, you know, that sib, you know, sibling that basically has done wrong and is the bad apple that fell far away from the tree. And he wanted to focus on that. Then I said to myself that's pretty good that's pretty good it's like focus on that long lost brother you didn't think about (laughs) you know Hmm. just think about think about that that long lost brother and of course you know rock he couldn't be in it because he was doing Hobbs and Shaw and him and Vin Diesel don't even get along on the set they butted heads yeah a lot of testosterone there yep that's that's what people said but he will, I mean, for the 10th one, he will be back in the 10th one in some shape or form. I'm I'm still waiting. Did you catch on the trailer when uh, they talked about Ludacris and Tyrese talked about the rocket car and the guy they were talking to with there? Yeah, I kind of did. Yeah, remember, he was in Tokyo Drift. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The guy with the, um, he's always like eating stuff. No, not Han. Not Han. It was the no, other guy. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised to see Han, but the other guy that was sitting there, and he's like, you got a rocket strapped to a, a gremlin or so, or whatever the car was, and the guy's sitting there, and he's like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the guy that was with Han in them in uh, Tokyo Drift. He was the uh, guy who did the, during the uh, drifting, when they were doing the drift racing, he was the guy that was that modified yeah. the cars, and he he hung out with the guy Sean, the girl that he was after, the love interest in Tokyo yeah, Drift. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, so I it it'd be nice to see the character Sean back again from Tokyo Drift because yeah. he was barely he was just in a brief second for the eighth one or the seventh, and that's basically it. That's all we got. But Han, how the fuck did they pull that off, you know? How the hell did they bring Han back from the dead? I just want to know no. that. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think happened? I don't know, man. That's, <laughs> I think maybe Paul Heyman's probably behind that one. <laughs> Paul Heyman. He's got to be, man. <laughs> He probably he probably did he probably he he's probably behind that one there Polly dangerously <laughs> right. yeah dude did make phone calls on his little old school portable cell phone and made yeah. made, made, made a deal maybe maybe they'll maybe they'll they'll say that right before they show a flashback of him in the car before it blew up. Someone grabbed him and pulled him out of it real quick, or it blew up and it knocked him out against the wall, and he was in a coma. And then he woke up; he didn't know who he was, just like Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah dude. So, dude, they could only turn shit around. You know what I mean? With any, pretty much anything. Yeah, it's like one of those daytime soap operas, man. No one dies. You die. You come back. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's like one of those. But I'm 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 psyched to see it come out this year because I'm a sucker for those movies. I love them. I've been following the franchise since 2001, and out of all eight that I've seen, my favorite one would have to be the first one, and and the fifth one. Those are my two favorite ones right there because the fifth one you thought that was it because they yeah. brought everybody in that they could and you're you're like and it's the one out of all the franchise that made the most money. Yeah. See, the first one's definitely my favorite. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of a sucker for that Tokyo Drift one. I'm not sure why. Yeah. But I I don't know. I like that one too. I do. I watched the hell out of it when it first came out. I refer oh, I bet. Boys and girls. Yeah. I mean, you never seen I never seen anything like that. And he had a good cast too. He had a really good cast that pulled it oh, yeah. off. And of course the surprise, you know, cameo with the uh, Dom at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's I love that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much Vin Diesel's been all nine movies now. He's pretty much has been. You know, even that cameo in uh with the Tokyo Drift counts as the character being in all movies, pretty much. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I I just Tokyo Tokyo Drift, I refer to Tokyo Drift as Halloween. The Halloween movies, the not not the remakes and stuff, like the original Halloween movies. The third one yeah. is called Season of the Witch. And Michael Myers was not even in the movie. It was a completely different story, completely different base uh, premise based off of something different. I refer, I look at Tokyo Drift like that. Same premise of Fast and Furious, yeah. but different, different style of racing in a different part of the world. That's it. Well, yeah. that's it. That's the way I look at it. There, it's definitely a good way to put that. Yep, definitely. Just the the way I look at it. Now, Speaking of TV and movies, dude, have you watched The Last Kingdom on Netflix? No, I haven't. People's been telling me I need to watch it. They say they said dude, that. Is some, be, bro. How is that? Well, it's good, dude. It's really good. I listen. I thought because I was huge on Game of Thrones, right? And like, I honestly had no idea what to do with my life when it was done. Never thought I'd ever like another show, and then I just kind of randomly stumbled across it, binged the shit out of it for like a week, watched all three seasons, and now I'm in the same position where I can't find anything to watch (laughs) at all. But yeah, it's really good, dude. I would definitely check that out. I'm definitely going to have to. My my wife just recently just binge-watched and finished all three seasons of The Crown. Oh, I've heard. I see. I've, I've never actually watched it. See, I'm one of those like judge a book by its cover kind of people mm-hmm. when it comes to movies and TV shows on Netflix, which is kind of a flaw of mine. Because, dude, you'll find some badass shows and movies that have the worst <laughs> covers on them and stuff like that. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, dude, that's what happened. I just started um, Peaky Blinders, and that's been out for a while. I just started that and never watched it just because of the cover and it's actually really good. Oh yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I, I looked at, I look at Netflix and I see all these shows and they, it looks like they have a lot of, they have a lot of great shows, but sometimes I don't even know where to start. I'll get on Netflix here lately. I would get on Netflix and, I'd start scrolling through, just start scrolling through and looking at stuff and watching the trailers for stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I'll go over to something else. Oh, that's cool. And I'll I'll do that. One day I'd sat there for about 30 minutes looking at stuff. And then I didn't even watch a damn thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's how it goes. That's, that's almost daily life for me, dude. Like, I literally spent, that's my like way of wasting time is literally just scrolling Netflix. <laughs> not even watching anything 
<laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the chat here. David C. Russell. I want to give a shout out to him. He joined joined the chat here. He said hello, hello to me, and then hello to hello to, hello to you, Solomon. And can I lay the smackdown? What can you lay the smackdown on, David? <laughs> I don't know. And then he says, "Heck, I was an extra for Cena." <laughs> okay. <laughs> So basically nobody saw you is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and he said that, can I race my electric scooter, the need for scooters? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's an extra spinoff. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's that's great. You're... You remember that show that was on MTV called Viva La Bam? It was right after Jackass. Oh, dude, I got season one and two on DVD. I still, I got all, I got all four seasons on DVD of Viva La Bam. I love that show. I love it, dude. I can watch it anytime. Remember when they went to Vegas and Don Vito and Phil got on the scooters and they started racing and they called it the Fat and the Furious? <laughs> it's yeah, dude. <laughs> God. Dude, that show was so awesome, man. It was. Just him ragging on Phil all the time. <laughs> I liked and just it. Phil, he put up with it all the time. Yeah, I, I liked it when he, he just, the, the first the first two episodes, when they took Phil's, he took his dad's truck and or his van, and he put the hydraulics on it, and Phil and Don <laughs> Vita was going through the drive through and they hit the thing, and they're bouncing up and down and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't they, like, fireworks off in there, too, or some shit? Or was that in the bedroom? It was in the bedroom, the fireworks, when they were uh, trying to do rock star in training. And Don Vito yeah, threw, the, yeah. <laughs> threw the fireworks that's in there. So funny. Or when they uh, printed hamburgers on all those clothes. <laughs> I think that was the Don't Feed Phil episode. Yeah, Don't Feed Phil. In the first, in the box set for the first season DVD of uh, Vila La Bam, it came with a bumper sticker, and I still have it. I've never put it on anything. It says, don't feel Phil. I have that, man. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. That'd be sweet, man. See, I got mine from, like, I don't know, one of those, like, used, like, DVD stores or whatever a long time ago. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I went out and bought I bought season one and season two at the store, but I went to a used video store and I found season three and four and I bought it and they were in they were in very good condition. I said those like did they even watch it? And I've had them I've had them ever since, along with like Jackass. I I love that stuff, man. That stuff was crazy. Dude, it's so stupid but so funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. How come how come they never actually like any of those guys actually like got into indie wrestling? Can you imagine Jackass now and these guys doing wrestling part time? Yeah, no kidding. The, well dude, uh you remember when Steve O and um God, what's his freaking name? Chris uh what's Pon- his name? Yeah. Pontius, I think Yeah. Dude, you remember when Umaga just freaking annihilated both of those guys? Oh, yeah. Not I, wrong, dude. Yeah. 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 That, so that. Watching the thing a few weeks ago, and they were both like reliving that moment watching on TV, and they're talking about, oh, like, they legit got the shit beat out of them. So it's great. Damn. Sound like something Steve would do. Because Steve-O was Probably. pretty damn crazy, man. Some of the shit he right? did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was laughing at, at when some of that stuff was happening, too. Yeah. He probably he probably was. He probably was laughing at all that shit that was happening with him, man. Because he was... it, And I remember that because... Do you remember... I remember watching it when it happened on TV. Do you remember watching it when it happened on TV? Because oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It... It seemed like it seemed like, yeah, he was really actually hurting him, and it was funny because at one point Steve-O was laughing, but then he wasn't laughing after the pain started kicking, and he was like, hey, hey, no, he kicked, no, and he was like, up. it's like no, especially especially what is it, the Samoan spike to the neck? Yeah, 
Steve was probably like, do it, man. And Umaga's probably <laughs> like, it's going to hurt. And he's like, no, do it. Okay. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> dude, actually, I actually met Steve-O, God, fuck, it was probably like 2010. It's like downtown Iowa City. Oh, did you? And he had a, yeah, it was weird because he had like, because he wasn't doing stand up or anything. And all of a sudden, like, they're advertising for this Steve O stand up show. I'm like, what? So I went to it. And uh, he was like, claiming, like, how he was all sober and shit. And, um, dude, after the show, he was legit partying with everybody and getting drunk. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Actually, yeah, dude, it was funny as hell, dude. I was like, damn. So I went up to him and started talking to him and stuff. And then we took a picture and stuff. But, dude, he was fucked up. I'm like, dude, you're crazy, man. That's that's crazy. It would it'd be nice to it'd be nice to actually. I wouldn't mind like meeting the cast from from Jack Asfield, Alabama. I think it'd be I think it'd be great. Oh, Just, dude, I think, um, fuck Don Vito too. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> How was that? that was long, dude, that was a long time ago. That that was like when uh, Viva La Bam first came out, dude. He had yeah. some like special appearance at this club me and my friends went to just randomly and he was there uh-huh. and he had this vip section and he was like sitting by himself on this big old couch all freaking you know how he had that cock eye looking to the left all the time I was like <laughs> jesus man he was sweaty and shit dude it was funny as hell <laughs> what what would be talking about celebrity encounters what would be the strangest counter you ever had happen to you? That I've actually had with, an, with a celebrity? Well, yeah, with a celebrity and also like with with a fan at a show. What's crazy uh, thing mm-hmm. encounters happen to you? <sighs> I'm trying to think all the time in my head, man. Because, um, <laughs> dude, it honestly happens on the regular all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Honestly, I can't think of anything in particular right now. Not not with fans, at least, because it's just weird shit all the time. Like wrestling fans are nuts. Yeah. Um, trying to think. I wouldn't say it's weird, but all right. So a couple of years ago, I was working at this restaurant in Florida. You know, working to, like support like wrestling and paying the bills and stuff like that, right. and. uh you remember that rabbit from, um, what's it called? Super troopers. Yeah. 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 So he came in, <clears throat> he came in. Right. And so I'm like doing a fucking triple take. I'm like, Oh my God, it's fucking rabbit from super troopers. And I was going up to all my coworkers and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, do you know who that is? Like, no, I'm like, have you ever fucking seen super troopers? Like what the hell man. Like no, do you want us to like go talk to him for you? I'm like no, dude. <laughs> he's dude, and he's with a, like an entourage. Like the most, I think they're like filming in Anna Maria Island in Florida. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so like I was kind of looking for excuses to go to the table, like maybe you know bring some water and shit like that. Right. And uh, I was being a chicken shit about it, so I just waited. And uh, for some reason, dude, I couldn't stop fucking sweating. I don't know if it was just because, like, it was a celebrity or whatever, but uh-huh. so finally his, him and his party were leaving, and like, just go fucking say hi, get a picture with him, blah, blah. So I went up there, <clears throat> so I'm already sweating my ass off, and meanwhile, it's four to 90 degrees, right? Uh-huh. And I had, like, this, they made us wear these ridiculous, like, chef coats for our server uh, uniform. Right. So I don't want to wear that. So my boss gave me, like, almost like a winter fucking jacket to put on so it made me sweat even more <laughs> so i went up to him like hey man such a fan of your work you're hilarious great you mind if i get a picture he's like yeah and then he put his arm around me and he goes dude you're sweaty <laughs> shit dude <laughs> so yeah so then i then we got a picture but he was super cool about everything though well, that's i mean i wouldn't say it's weird but it's kind of embarrassing but yeah yeah I met, I went up to New York, me and my wife went up to New York for 
SummerSlam 2015, and we went there for the pay-per-view. And then the following night, with the package deal that we got, we I think we spent our tax money on it that year. Just to go up there for it. And the following night, we went to Monday Night Raw. And the morning before SummerSlam, we had a meet and greet with two, two of the... Uh, Superstars. We didn't know who we were going to meet. So we went in there at the hotel where we stayed out there in Times Square. We went in yeah. to where we were supposed to do the meet and greet. We ate we ate breakfast there, and we sat at the table with a bunch of other other fans. And we are talking about stories and talking about wrestling. I mean, some of the guys at the table we're sitting with were really, like, diehard. And I looked at my wife, and I'm like, I love wrestling, but I don't love it like that this guy yeah, had yeah. like a photo book dude that was like thick like a damn dictionary and just all the autographs from everybody he's met and i couldn't believe it and someone at the table it was it felt a little bit tense and someone at the table said i wonder who we're gonna meet and i just out loud said we're in new york right and everyone's like yeah i said It'd probably be Steve Labarty. <laughs> everyone started laughing. Do the Brooklyn Brawler, <laughs> and everyone just started laughing, and they, the tension broke. And then all of a sudden, we seen Paige show up. We see Seth Rollins show up. Oh, okay. Now this is who we're meeting. Okay. Bad experience. They rushed us in, rushed us out, and that was it. But when I took a picture of Paige, she was cool. I briefly got to talk to her. Went over to see Rollins. I was like, hey, what's up? I was like, what's up, Rollins? And I was wearing an Ambrose shirt. He First thing he did was look up and look at the shirt. And he was like, eh. And I was like, he was he was just being a dick. And just, I took a picture with him. And he didn't really smile in the picture. He signed my picture. And then just the, my little book program I had with autograph, uh, like people in it. He signed, he signed his autograph. And then we went on. And just that experience just was just was bad it just i mean i, I liked it That's but funny, it just right, felt, so I, I, oh go ahead you know it, it just felt weird it just felt weird and i was like i i, I was talking trying to talk to him too i was like i was like good luck tonight man i was like, i'm looking forward to you beating john cena and he kind of looked up he was like <laughs> let's just not giving no response and it just felt awkward and there I am I'm just like I felt like you meeting just like that and I and when I walked off I looked, my, I looked at my wife she's like you okay I was like that was that was cool but not really <laughs> <laughs> right dreams rushed yeah yeah it's just yeah, well, dude, I've heard I've heard he's a fucking dick though yeah he he don't like the, he don't like fans and I can understand why. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, funny, though, I actually, <clears throat> a couple of buddies of mine that I work with, a uh, tag team called The Mosh, um, they actually went and trained with Seth Rollins at, um, at his academy in, in Iowa for a little bit. Right. Pretty much, pretty much said the same thing. Like, he's kind of a dick, so... Why why is it the guys why is it the guys you think they're gonna be cool and they turn out to be like dicks? Why why does that happen? Why does that happen? I'm not sure. I don't know. Luckily I haven't met anybody like that yet, but Same same thing kinda happened with me with Animal or Hawk. I can't remember which one's alive and which one's that passed away from the road warriors. Oh, animals alive. Yeah. Animal. I met animal. I met him at, uh, Jimmy hearts when his place was still here in Daytona. And I went up there and for a pay-per-view, I forget which pay-per-view it was animal was there signing autographs. So I went up there and got my picture taken with him. And I mentioned that I knew J.J. McGuire, and if you remember J.J., he's like, oh, yeah, I remember J.J., and I was talking to him. I said, I spoke with J.J., and he wanted me to, you know, mention to you about SummerSlam 91, and 
he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I'm talking to him about this, he kind of like just brushed me off. And I'm, I'm standing there talking, and then in the middle while I'm talking, he kind of just brushed me off, and I stopped talking right away. I was like, okay. I was like, all right, see you later. And I just walked off. I walked off, and I sat back down, and a friend of mine was like, so how is like you met animal? I was like, yeah, and um, it's probably gonna be the last time. <laughs> it just felt. <laughs> it just. It just just you, you try to have a conversation with someone and they brush you off like you're no one. I just that bugs right. me. And then you got some people. You ever notice you got some people that when you see that happens, you know they're trying to brush them off and they just stand there and just keep going on and going. It's like he did, he don't care what you got to say. Just go on. Just go on now. <laughs> Cause yeah, yeah. Like, all right, I'll go fuck myself now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It just, it, it just kills me, man. It just kills oh, me yeah. about that sometimes. I just, <laughs> I, to me, if I, if I run into someone and I meet them, that's great. That's great. I'm going to say, Hey, what's up? How you doing? Love what you do and, uh, keep it up and, uh, you know, hope everything works out. That's basically it. I ran into Simon Grimm, so who used to be Simon Gotch in WWE at the uh, AEW oh, yeah. Fire Fighter Fest when it came to Daytona, and I didn't even a- ask for a picture or nothing. I seen him after the show. He was just standing there, just hanging out. I walked up to him. I said, uh, "Simon Grimm, what's up, man?" And I stuck my hand out, and he shook it. He's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I said, "Pretty good." And I said. I just want to let you know I appreciate everything you did back when you were WWE and everything you're doing at ROH right now. He said, well, thank you. I do appreciate that. And I said, I remember coming over uh, when you were in WWE, coming over to Daytona with NXT, and I was there at the shows that you did. And he's like, oh, yeah. He said, at that place. He said, that place is crazy. He said, we've seen the cops tase a homeless man out back behind the place. <laughs> I said, yeah. I, I said, that's Daytona. But I said, uh, I said, love what you do and uh, looking forward to seeing what you do next. And he said, okay, appreciate it. I said, all right, have a good night. And I went on and I told that to someone. They said, you didn't take your picture with them? I said, no, why? <laughs> why did I need to? <laughs> I was just right. yeah, I was like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And <laughs> that's basically it. Just shooting the shit. Yeah, yeah just shooting the shit. <laughs> like, like we are tonight, man. I, I love right. this. No, no, no questions. Just talking, talking about everything, and just about That's what anything. you do, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, going off off the script or off of a uh, nothing, basically just good conversation. That's what I love. Yeah. I rarely do any of these. I rarely do just a random just conversation, and it's something I miss sometimes because I already. In, in my head, I already know where I want to go with the conversation if I was doing an interview, which I've done before stuff on the fly because I've been doing it for so long that eventually I just pull pull stuff out that I already know what I want to ask. And the way I look at it is a promo. The way I look at, oh, yeah. promo, way I look at promos, to me, I think original promos that are given points and you hit those points and you get them across become or to me are more aesthetic than a just wrote down scripted promo. Yeah, definitely, dude. <clears throat> See, like when I do mine, I I try not to really think like you I mean you're obviously gonna have like what point you want to get across, but that's really it for me. I just mm-hmm. kinda just go with whatever whatever stupid shit comes to mind, dude. <laughs> dude usually i just like ripping on people and it just comes naturally so, so i'm kind of a kind of a dick sometimes but in a good friendly way of course yeah some people some people take it the wrong way as i can i can see right there on the on the chat there tonight uh from earlier i can see that but yeah i i enjoy the aesthetic by points, it's here's the points. This is what you need to hit. Hit these points. Get them across. Here's here you go. Ready, set, go. It's yeah. just a robotic script on what you're supposed to read. I hate that. Yeah, 
I hate that. Yeah. You just got too much stuff to remember. You're going to, I mean, you're going to fuck up. So it's just like, just go out there and just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just go out there, make the best of it, make the best of it and just lay into it. Just lay into it there. Def- definitely do that. Yeah. Dude, people definitely get a little sense of those stuff. Like, like tonight, actually early today, I, uh, cause I was going to make a promo for an upcoming event. So I messed with the dude just to make sure, like, I know he's not like sensitive or anything like that, but you never know. You know what I mean? Right. And I was messing with him like, Hey, um, I'm going to do a promo about our match coming up. I was like, you're not easily offended or anything. Are you? Cause I talk a lot of crap and like rip on people. He's like, no, no. Good. I'm like, good. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta make sense sometimes, bro. Cause some people like legit get so butt hurt over stuff. It's like, there's nothing personal, man. Yeah. It's business. It's business. You basically your opponents put in front of you. You got what you, you have something to say, and you're gonna say it, and then they're gonna respond back. Or if not, then they'll do it when they see in the ring. Right? Yeah. That's definitely exactly. definitely it. If I was if I was if I were talking about promos, since we're on on that on this topic here discussing it. Promos. Who would you who would you say would be your favorite person that cut promos in the business? Best promos. One person well, that sticks out. Uh, I'm trying to think of some good promo guys. There's a lot. There's What's that? I said there is a lot in the there is a lot of good promo people. I mean, uh, like now, like current, like a current wrestler now who's just like a natural at promos is Adam Cole, like by far, like dude, he's so good. Like just the way he talks and everything. And he kind of, for some reason, he kind of reminds me of like an HBK, but not as cocky as HBK, if that makes sense. Uh huh. But I mean, I think Adam Cole's great on promos. Um, but like back in the day. Um, God, of course the rock, I mean, that's a no brainer right there. Yeah. Um, man, he caught me in a bad time. I don't know. (laughs) Off the top of my head. (laughs) Like you said, there's so many dudes. There is, there is so many. What about, what about who? No, what about you? Like who? Who are you, uh, like, who did you, like, growing up promo-wise? I would have to say Ric Flair. Ric Flair comes to mind with promos there. Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes, they, they cut, they cut, they cut really good promos, especially when they had feuds against each other. Macho Man Randy Savage, just off-the-wall stuff, you know, the cream rises to the top and just stuff like that. Ultimate Warrior, you didn't know what the hell he was going to say, and then he was out there. But yeah, you got your attention though for sure. <laughs> then I have to say, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, his promos were straight to the point where basically, if uh, you got a problem with me, you come out to the ring here, and I'm going to whip your ass. Basically, I'm going to whip yep. your ass promos. That's the how I look at Stone Cold. He had those whip, I'm going to whip your ass promos, and that's the bottom line because you ain't going to do nothing yeah. about it. And, of course, The Rock and uh, Triple H, those guys had some great promos. That Those come to mind, oh, especially yeah. The Rock at, like, modern day. And CM Punk. CM Punk was great on the mic. Oh, for sure. Natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that the both those... Both those guys come to mind, especially, yeah, especially, especially like CM Punk, I'd have to say, would have to be my favorite there. But when it does come to laying it down on like a good promo, I I go old school. I go with Ric Flair and uh, <laughs> and Dusty Rhodes. I had a friend of mine at work. We were joking around one day and we would just sit there. We'll do like the Ric Flair thing. He'll say, <laughs> he'll say, I spent more money 
on on spill liquor. <laughs> you know, to go woo <laughs> and just go back and forth and stuff. <laughs> And just you, you'd laugh and have a good time and stuff. Yeah, it's like it's like I spilled spent more money on spilt liquor. <laughs> just we love that. It's just this one was awesome too, man. Yeah. I don't, yeah, dude. Everyone that you listed, I don't know how those didn't come to the top of my head. Yeah, but those that would pretty much be my answer. Definitely all those. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 great. They're great. I didn't say like now. If you, yeah, Adam Cole, he he cuts damn good promos. I didn't say Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman still has it on what he does. Oh. He he does. Paul Heyman cuts some really good promos, and I love how he does it because he he it comes off like he's smart, but he also looks at the audience and is like, "You're dumb." I'm smarter, and this is what I know, and this is what's going to happen. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, either way, he connects with those people, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He does. <clears throat> he he connects. All right, with them. I, have, I have a random question for you. Okay. Now, this is wrestling-related. Okay. What? Okay, I would say probably more in your youth days. What was one of your most devastating moments that happened in wrestling like that, like fucking that killed you, dude, like broke you down. Undertaker defeating Hulk Hogan. It's a survivor series. 19. I think it was. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, dude. I remember that too, actually. Yeah, because Hogan was on top of the world. Because I I was a Hulk Hogan fan. Hogan was on top of the world. And then you have this guy come up like the Undertaker. Who's the Undertaker? And like you've seen before, Hogan knocked him down. They stepped up to the plate and Hogan took a, they took a swing of Hogan. They struck out and Hogan basically dominated him. And then he went on. And yeah. this guy comes along and I, I refer to, you know how people were shocked when Lesnar broke Undertaker's streak? Yeah. I refer to this back then as that. As a kid, I remember going to school before the weekend, before the Survivor Series. My re- friends that were in the wrestling said, said, I don't know about Hogan. He's going to lose the title. I don't think he's going to lose it. No, no, he's not. It's Hulk Hogan. He can, he can never lose. No one can take the title from him. Monday morning, <laughs> we come to school. Oh, man. It's Undertaker beat Hogan. It's like, what? No. <laughs> we were like, oh, just we... The teacher almost put us in detention because we were so loud discussing that. Just in the classroom just because Undertaker beat beat Hogan and took the title we were like what the heck and then someone was like yeah because of Ric Flair and then <laughs> I go home chair, yeah yeah remember that he used yeah Ric, Ric Flair I remember that my dad man I think he broke the TV because a freaking Flair was on TV because my dad jump up my dad, good old country Tennessee boy, he hated Flair. He hated Flair. He'd spit and throw stuff at the TV when Flair would come on. He was Dusty Rhodes. Flair showed up on the TV. My dad jump up, and he's like, he's like, get off my fucking TV. Fuck you, Rick Flair. <laughs> Just cussing and yelling at the TV, man. Just going on. And just, I... I'd laugh. Me and my brother sit back and laugh because my dad get riled up, man. He, he he got into it, man. And I think that's where I still get it to day, this day. He just gets into it. But that David that that shocked me. It's like this guy beat the Undertaker. This guy, the Undertaker, beat Hulk Hogan. No one beats Hulk Hogan. I was devastated, no. man. I was. Fucking devastated. I thought it was right. the end. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Dude, my story is like literally almost in the same exact boat, right? So, like, 
complete Hulk, Hulkamaniac, dude. Obsessed with Hulk Hogan, right? And so at that time, like when I saw the like the Undertaker and Hogan thing, like that was me. God, back then, like I was like making my mom take me to the video store, renting like twenty freaking VHS tapes at a time. Right. But what was it? WrestleMania nine. I think, God, I was like, fuck, kindergarten or first grade. I think, I think it was a first grade. Uh And so when I watched WrestleMania nine, that was when, um, no, no, it was not WrestleMania. It was King of the Ring, dude. Cause that's when Yoko beat Hogan. And that was when Hogan was actually like leaving and everything. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's like, that's what I actually saw. So I watched it live, dude. And, uh, so that's when like, you know, that, what was that, that little camera dude? The sparks flew out in Hogan's eyes and shit, and then Yoko like leg dropped him and beat him, right? Yeah. <clears throat> like right then and there, I'm like fucking devastated, dude. I'm like, no, no way, dude. Like freaking out, like, oh my god, like almost like crying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh dude, I will never forget all I heard was Bobby Heenan saying Hulkamania is dead. And I legit went to school the next day thinking Hulk Hulk Hogan died. So I'm like telling my friends and shit, like, you know, I think I only had like one friend that was like actually into wrestling too. Mm-hmm. But I was like telling my other friends, like, you know what happened about it? I was like, dude, Hulk Hogan died, blah, blah, blah. Sumo killed him, stuff like that. And uh, like, dude, I was like crying. And uh, they were laughing at me like, dude, wrestling is stupid. I'm like, what? Dude, I was so devastated, bro. So not only did Hulk Hogan die, apparently. But also wrestling was stupid. So worst day of my life. Yeah. It was horrible. It was devastated, dude. Yeah, I was I but was then, then later that summer or yeah, later that summer, he's in Thunder in Paradise. So hey, Hulk Hogan is fucking alive. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I that was that was devastating there. Seeing Hogan and then Hogan losing the Undertaker and then yeah, Hogan losing to Yokozumo, you're like, really? But I think the only time I was actually glad that he lost was on WCW Nitro in 1998 at the Atlanta. Goldberg? Yeah, Goldberg, when Goldberg won his first world heavyweight title, man. That Solomon, fucking yeah. roof blew off the fucking Georgia Dome when, <laughs> uh, when Goldberg jackhammered Hogan, man. That dude, was that crowd great. was insane. Like, that was such a huge pop for that. Oh God, yeah, that was ju- that was just great. When I watched it, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" That was that had to be one of my favorite wrestling moments of all time. Seeing Goldberg, they built this guy up for almost a what a year, and yeah, he gets his title shot, and right there on live TV, not even a pay per view. I wonder, I, I'd like to go back and look and see what the ratings were that night when Goldberg beat Hogan for his first world title. That, oh, yeah, that, rough, dude. that would be amazing right there. That's a moment right there. Yeah, that'd definitely be a moment. And, dude, I miss the crowds being like that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, had, I have a friend we were talking with. We were discussing... I think it was last year. He said, if you look at wrestling fans now, when they're in the crowd compared to what they were back then, they were more live back then. They were much more oh, live. Sure. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, you go to a wrestling event. I went to one in uh, Tampa a couple of years ago. Like I've been to a couple since then, but uh, this one in particular, I bought, or I brought a couple of signs or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, Dude, I was legit probably like one of ten people in that entire fucking building that brought a sign. Like what? <laughs> like nobody brings signs, dude. If you like pay attention, like, barely anybody brings signs. And, like you remember back in like the Stone Cold days, dude. Like, yeah. The place was filled with signs. You could barely even see people. Yeah, yeah. D- during the during the Attitude Era, I remember that. That was that was nuts. I wish I wish wrestling fans were more like that now. And so. Yeah, I, I, I agree. They they should be more like that now. There for a while, when I would go see NXT when they come to Daytona, I realized after I, when I'm, after leaving one of the events, 
I was going through looking at the pictures that I take, and I'm going through flipping, 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 and I said to myself, I said, I'm not a photographer. I've taken, I, I watched this whole live show through the lens of a cell phone. I said, that's wrong. I said to myself, I said, that's wrong. I said, next time they come back, it's not going to happen. And it didn't because when the only time I pulled out my phone and snapped a couple pictures was in the middle of a match of someone I was in, you know, interested in watching. During the middle of the match, I pulled out my phone. I was like, click, click, two pictures, done. Stick it back in my pocket. I sat right there, stomped my feet, clapped my hands, and cheered for who I wanted to and booed who I didn't want. And then yep. during the middle of the match, again, I'd sit there, pull out my phone. Okay, it looks like a good spot coming up. Captured, captured. Okay, put it back in my phone. Do the same thing again. And when I left, I said, that was that was one of the best shows I've been at. And then I realized, yeah, because you didn't watch it through your fucking phone. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you didn't watch it through your fucking Ooh. phone. And it's all like you see nowadays, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I you ever you ever you ever done a show, and right there on the front row, you're you're in the ring and you're cutting a promo, or you're having a match, and you do you happen to look over and you just notice that one person they're looking down the whole time on their phone and looking up and they're looking down, looking up, or they don't even acknowledge the match is coming. It's happening right in front of them, and you say to yourself. Why did you even come tonight? Why did oh, yeah. you come tonight? Because you're gonna you're on your phone. You could have done that at home. You ever you ever had yeah. that happen before? Yeah, dude, I see it. I see it quite a bit. Like you, like even like you know, like before I wrestle or after, like I'll watch like you know the matches, or sometimes I'll like get changed and go sit somewhere and kind of in the corner of the in the crowd and watch and stuff. I just, dude, I just notice all the time. It drives me nuts. It's like get off your goddamn phone. And watch the damn show you paid for. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I just don't understand it. Those people are so, no matter where they go, it's just in their phones. Like, I get it. Like, dude, I'm a victim to it, too. But if I go to something that I actually pay for and enjoy, yeah, like, I watch it. I'm not going to spend my entire time on my damn phone. But, dude, that drives me nuts. Especially at wrestling shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was bad at that. And then, yeah, I realized... Just if you're gonna take a couple pictures when you feel that moment's coming, you you can tell when something big is gonna happen. You're gonna want to pull, pull out your phone okay. and capture it. That's cool, but don't stand there the whole time and you run your damn battery down because you're trying to you're taking fifty million pictures. How many of those pictures are you gonna actually post on your social media? <laughs> Hopefully not all three hundred and sixty eight of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I asked someone one time to send me some pictures for an event they were at. I said, I said, send me about two, two good pictures of each thing and, uh, I'll work with it. They sent me, yeah, almost, it seemed like 360 pictures of like my messenger blew up and I got back when I had time to get a word in. I said, Dude, hey, 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 I asked for two, <laughs> not 360. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, go back through, hit, get back with me in two days, and give me one picture of each thing. Okay. So they went through, and I got one picture of each thing, which ended up being about five pictures. I said, perfect. Perfect. Right. Yeah, f- yeah, you had five matches, and you got a picture, one picture capturing a moment in each of those matches. That's all I want. Not 360 from one match and then 360 again from the second match. It's like, no. Not a damn snap book, okay? Yeah, I can't, I can't handle this shit. <laughs> I, I, I can't go through all those pictures. I'm not a photographer. I just need something right. to promote you with that I was blog posting about. And, yeah, it... It was much better. Five pitchers. This happened for this match. This match. Okay, cool. All right. I can definitely do right. that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't need 360 pitchers and say, pick one. <laughs> I, where do I start? <laughs> Should I? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you think uh, pitcher 250 is better than uh, 194? Which one's better? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 It's, just, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. It's nuts. Speaking of shows, do you, when you go to shows, I don't know about you, but like if you ever go to like wrestling shows with like your buddies or anybody, like a lot of my friends will get drunk, like hammered. I'm one of those people that cannot, like I don't, I'd never ever drink at any wrestling shows ever. Do you prefer to stay sober or get drunk? I prefer to stay sober, but it depends. When 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 I'm at a wrestling event, I went to a couple of Monday Night Raws and I went to yeah, of course SummerSlam and then oh yeah, in July of 2014, Battleground came to Tampa. I went to that. Well, dude, I was there too. Were you? Yeah, dude, I was legit at that. All right, so, I, dude, I had the shittiest seats in that fucking goddamn Amelie Arena or whatever it was, whatever it was called before. But, dude, my seats were right, literally like right, like halfway behind, halfway in front of the Titan Tron. Uh-huh. So I can see like everything in the back and also when they come out. Yeah. Dude, wow. it was horrible. But it was it was cool, but still like the shittiest seeds ever. You so you were there. Yeah, because I think that was uh it was Roman Reigns and I want to say Orton. Orton and John Cena and Kane in a uh, fatal four way. Yeah. What Dean yeah, because that was the only battleground that was in Tampa. Yeah. Um, who was it? Did they tee? That was when Ambrose and Rollins were feuding, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they teased a match, which didn't they happen. But, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when Ambrose ran after Rollins in the parking lot, and then he jumped on the yeah, car, yeah, and yeah, Rollins yeah. took off, and they didn't have a match. You're like, what the fuck? And then, yeah. and then that's when Rusev. Remember, Rusev was getting hot. He was hot at that yeah. time on that on that he was destroying everybody. I was there. I sat you know where when remember when Roman Reigns used to come down the in uh through the crowd for his entrance? Yeah. I basically was about from the steps there, I was one four seats over from when he came down. Nice. Yeah. And I brought a sign. I put Everett Lee on it and it had it pointing down and then on the other side I had the when I worked back in the day when I worked at um, when I worked at uh, Sam's Club I put the store number on there <laughs> on the back side <laughs> just and then I'd show people because on the WD Network they're like you didn't go to I said yeah I did I said look there I am with the blue sign what's the store number say they're like oh no way no way I, it's like you're on the, you're on the WD Network I said yeah I'm actually on there twice <laughs> But um, club. yeah, <laughs> I was representing back then. I even showed the club manager, and he he was like, "Oh, that is so awesome, man!" He's like, "That is so cool." I said, "Yeah, it's forever on there, man." And it was cool at the moment, but I was sitting right there. I went to the concession stand, and I before the pay per view started, I grabbed a beer. You know how big those the cups were with the beer, right? Those things. Oh yeah, those thirteen dollar beers. Yeah, they were fucking huge. So, I bought one, and then I came. I got my wife something, and uh, after there, right before it was during when Wade Barrett. When remember they had the battle royal for the Intercontinental Championship, and Wade Barrett was. Didn't he have to give it up or something? Yeah, yeah. I was at the concession stand. I missed him out there cutting the promo about it, and I come back. They're having the battle royal. I am. I'm killing half the beer, getting back to my seat. I'm like, hey, hun, what I miss? Oh, this, this, this. Oh, okay. Yeah, just enjoying it. And then I ran back to the concession stand after the battle royal, grabbed another beer. I had three of those big ass beers. I barely ate anything that day, so I got drunk. I was buzzing. Okay. By the time Rusev wrestled Jack Swagger, remember? Oh. Yeah, 
I when I was I was yelling like Jack to defeat Rusev. I was yelling. I'm like kick his ass, kick his ass. I was yelling. And then remember Jack did the ankle lock. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. When, when he was doing the ankle lock and the crowd was popping, remember that when he put oh, Rusev, yeah. because they. Everyone wanted to see someone beat him because he was on that undefeated streak. Yeah. Well, when Jack Swagger put Rusev in that ankle lock, I was yelling and I was like, break his fucking ankle. I about lost my voice yelling so much. My wife looked at me. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm having a good time. I'm just like, I was sitting there just buzzing. And people next to me that I was talking to and chilling with, they were laughing. They were freaking laughing at me because I was just so into it. I almost stood up on my chair yelling, and my wife's like, you better not. And I look over, and I see security kind of like, you know, looking as like, oh, yeah. yeah, we, we may have a problem here. We may have to throw this guy out. I got so into it, and I was drunk. But I, it was just one of those, one of those times it just happened. I was just so excited. It was like my first pay-per-view event. And I was gonna make the best of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so cool that you were there and I was there. I got the I got the floor chairs, man. I still got them. They're sitting over next to me here. I still got. Oh them. yeah, yeah. It has Bray White on the on the uh, thing? Nice. I'll uh, yeah, event, dude. Like I was just sitting in that seat, and that was when uh, yeah, pretty much. NXT first started, not the shitty NXT, but like NXT, NXT. Yeah. And um, down, like if you walk down the steps more, all the NXT roster was just that watching, like the entire match and stuff, just shooting the shit. Nice. It's all like Arn Anderson and Brooklyn Brawler, all those, you know, being agents and shit over there and stuff like that. But that was that was the highlight of my night. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. You get to see. You get to see. You get to see them. That's crazy. How Double A left WWE and he's in AEW now. Ain't that oh, insane? Yeah, that is. I just <laughs> Cody right now, don't they? Yeah, he's working with Cody. He's doing stuff with Cody Cody Rhodes right now. But I just I just couldn't believe that they they let him go. Vince Vince let him go. And Vince, from what I hear and from what I've read, Vince could be hard to work with. If you don't, you don't do it his way, you're you're out the door. And look how long Arn was working backstage for the guy, and now he's an AEW. And I love the angle and everything they're doing, like with Cody with having Arn next to him at ringside. I love that. I love that. I think it's yeah, that's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's pretty. It's pretty neat. I I love that. I enjoy it. And there's weeks where I watch NXT and I watch AEW, but then sometimes when I start watching one of the other shows, I just stick with it through the whole night. And then I say to myself, this or it depends on what's going on with the show. And I say to myself, this show has the better programming that night. Next week, it'd be a whole totally different ball game, depending on what's going on. And oh yeah, most of most of November, I watched more NXT than I did AEW because of the Survivor Series. Because I did like the fact that they threw in for the first time in Survivor Series NXT, which I thought was brilliant. It's like, why not give these guys, yeah. Why don't I give these guys a push and a recognition that they deserve, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They definitely, I, I definitely would like to see them have more involvement with their like pay per views and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, clearly the crowd, like fans, obviously wanted to, like they know who all these NXT guys are and stuff. So, I mean, it would benefit both, honestly, the NXT guys and the programming too. Mm-hmm. It. It would, it would, it would definitely benefit from them because I was telling my wife that 
we talk we we talk a lot about wrestling going back and forth. She'll read stuff that I I start to tell her about, and she's I already read about that today, or I heard about that. And I was like, damn, did you hear about? No, I already heard about it. Like, fuck, what about? No, I already read that today. I was like, where? When do you have time? Oh, I I had time, and so I decided to see what was going on with wrestling. I was like, really? I was like, shit. And she's like, yeah, I went over to this site, huh? without me yeah without me because <laughs> sometimes we do sit right here and just look and read what's going on she's like i wonder what's going on with this good idea let me pull this up to see what the dirt sheets are talking about see what this site's talking about compared to this site are they the same thing or same source and yeah it's just i was telling her i said i look at nxt now it's hard for me to look at NXT now as a developmental brand. They're basically a third brand now because look look what they're doing on the USA Network now. They're totally yeah. So yeah, you got three <clears throat> brands, and if you really do look at it too, you kind of have a fourth brand, which is NXT UK because those those guys are amazing. Have you? You seen the talent they have over there on that programming? Yeah, see I've watched see I haven't watched it as much as I have the other stuff, like but I've caught a little bit of it and it is pretty it is pretty sweet too. Like they have some pretty awesome talent. Like dude Walter alone, he's God. dude, he's awesome. Damn. That guy that guy is um I'm sorry, that guy's a fucking beast, man. I loved the angle they did for Worlds Collide with Imperium versus the Undisputed Era. I was yeah. pulling Seriously, I was pulling for Undisputed Era, but I was glad that Walter won Imperium because it put them over. I felt like they I felt like they did a good job putting the UK brand over, which needs more recognition. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because you have Rhea Ripley. She's representing the. Uh, she won the. She's the NXT Women's Champion now, and her showing up on Monday Night Raw, looking at Charlotte Flair, saying, "You know what? You haven't beat me here, dangling that title." And said, "Here's a title you could go after," which I think would be brilliant <clears throat> at first. At first, I just said no, no, but then. I actually thought about it, and I said to myself, I said, how many times you have to see Charlotte beat Becky? How many times you have to see Charlotte beat Bailey? Rhea Ripley, perfect. Good match. Yeah. Dude, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. Like, dude, when Charlotte won the Rumble, dude, I, was, I was like, damn it, dude, come on. But then I was like, there's got to be a reason behind it, because there's no way they're going to make you know, have her against Bailey or Becky again. It, it couldn't be, you know. So now that they're doing that, I'm like, hell yeah, I can get behind that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I said the same thing to myself. I said, why not? They're go that's a different direction and it's also putting NXT out there. And Rhea Ripley is fantastic talent in the ring. Everything that she did with NXT UK and I was glad they brought her stateside mm -hmm. to do stuff with, with, uh, with uh, NXT. Um, Shayna yeah. Baszler was my pick to win the Royal Rumble because I was Dude, hoping. Dude, mine too. I was like, hell yeah! I was actually popping for that too. Yeah, I was. I was hoping she'd win it, and I was hoping to her to see her and Becky Lynch because I would have loved to see that though. But. <clears throat> I'll take this, Rhea Ripley. I I heard they were dabbing around with that to see what would happen. And hell yeah, yeah, I'm there. Yo, what about Ronda? Where the hell? What? Is she not coming back anytime soon, or what? From what I read, she's she was supposed to come back soon, and then I was I was actually expecting her to come back at the Royal Rumble. As yeah, surprise. me too, dude. Yeah, the surprise entry, her comeback. Here's how I thought they were going to book it. Ronda comes in, surprise entry at whatever number. She comes in, wins a rumble. And then Monday Night Raw, she comes out there and she says, 
I challenge you at WrestleMania, Becky Lynch. We're going to have that match. I'm going to take that title back that you took from me from a year ago. And then Becky come in and is like, well, where the hell you where you been hiding at? Is like, were you hiding because I kicked your ass? And then have Ronda say, no, I was training and uh, licking my wounds so I could come back and pre- at the right time to come take that title back from you. And have it to where, have Ronda put a new move in her arsenal. There you go. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. That would be something great right there. And at WrestleMania, she goes, she has her match with Becky, and she whatever moves she learned, she freaking uses it. She she teases it. She's like, I have a new move in my arsenal. And you don't know what it is, and she builds it up. And at Mania, millions of people are watching Mania, and she unleashes that new move. And she uses it to defeat Becky, and people lose their shit. They're like, she won the belt back. You know, what? what's Becky Lynch going to do now? You know? That's that's what I wanted. I'd like to see, but they didn't. They didn't do that. Yeah, they they didn't do that. I would love to see some shit like that because I think it would have been fucking great if they did. But I don't know, man. Who knows when she's going to come back? She may come back. It'd be awesome if she comes back at one of the other big four this year, besides Mania, Survivor yeah. Series. I mean, not Survivor Series, SummerSlam <laughs> or Survivor Series. Was the other two big four this year? I would think probably definitely SummerSlam for sure. Yeah. Because SummerSlam, you could build a whole story to Mania like they did with Becky last year. She is. Oh, yeah. They started at SummerSlam and they went all the way up and they concluded at Mania. They could definitely do something like that. But sometimes I question the booking here with certain things at WWE. And in like other oh, programs, no. I say to myself, I said, you know, they book it for a reason, but then they have a reason later on, or they just booked it because they didn't know what else to do. And then they just drop it completely. <laughs> they drop the ball. I hate that. The Lana, Lana, Rusev, Lashley thing. God. <laughs> yeah, that was. I think the best thing that come out of that was. Liv Morgan, honestly, but now, now I could see, yeah. But I felt bad. Why have bring Liv Morgan back like this? Because I was expecting her to come back as Sister Abigail or some kind of something with the Firefly. Yeah, yeah. for the Firefly Funhouse. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, talk about transformations. Look at Daniel Bryan, man. He went like he went a whole like one eighty. He went back to. Oh, no, I know. I, I refer to him now as the he went back to the twenty twelve Dan O'Brien. Yep. Which which I liked. Did you did you like the twenty twelve flashback? Uh huh. I like the twenty twelve Dan O'Brien. I like that from what I, I do. from what I seen and stuff. I still like when he did the world's toughest vegan. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I still love that. I still love that. I think that shit is fucking great. I thought it was great. I loved it when he lost the title in thirty seconds, and then in the following night on Raw, he told AJ, "He's like, you can take your cheeseburgers, you can take your gas guzzling SUV." <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, that was definitely good stuff there, man. That was good. That was just good, good stuff, man. I was actually at that mania too when Sheamus kicked him, like and beat him in like however many seconds it was too. You were there, or you would have been there. You would have liked. To no, be I there. was. You were. Yeah. <laughs> no. no way. Way. Miami. Oh shit! No way. You were there. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah, man! I just see the rock and shit, dude. I was no. If you want to mark a mark out moment, that was that was mine for sure. I was screaming like a little girl, <laughs> fangirl over there. <laughs> let me let me ask you. The main event at it was WrestleMania what, twenty eight? Yep. Yeah, right. WrestleMania twenty eight. Main event, The Rock versus John Cena. How loud was the arena there when those two when the match when the bell rang? 
It was it was pretty loud, man. Was it was it loud? Like the whole atmosphere, yeah, dude. Just I mean, for one, the rock and shit, but dude, it was pretty electric for sure. It was loud, man. I can imagine. a couple of those fall season stuff too, and then when the rock hit the rock bottom and beat them, dude, and freaking place exploded. Damn, I can imagine because they built that up for a whole year. It actually started WrestleMania yeah. 27, the the beginning of it. Yeah. And then for the whole year, they waited till Mania 28, and then they waited a whole another year, and then they it concluded at WrestleMania 29. Yeah, so much for once in a lifetime, huh? Yeah, <laughs> because they made so much money, man. Why not? You know, once in a no. lifetime again, they should have named it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> but, we knew, but we knew Cena was going to win that back with the next one. Yeah. Yeah. It only made sense. I liked their second match, actually. I liked how that finished because The Rock's sitting there waiting for John Cena to get up, and I'm just sitting there. It's like, yeah, he's going to win. It's like, all right, come on, get it over with. <laughs> get it over with. But right. the, when he hooked him with The Rock bottom and the way he countered into that and it just gave him the... I was going to say F-U, I still call it that. Uh, the A-A, and it went one, two, three. It just, yeah. it was just obvious there. I saw, I seen John Cena back in the day before he was John Cena. Really, I was like his California UPW days, I think it was? No, prototype days from OVW, yeah, from OVW. OVW. Dang, that's old school Cena. Yeah, I tell you, this is this is this is what happened. It was two thousand and two. It was two thousand and two. I lived in Tennessee at the time. I was in Knox. I lived next to Knoxville, Tennessee. I got tickets, three tickets to go to a WWE live event. That's when they they first started the what is it the roster split with like the Raw, you know, Raw live shows, SmackDown live shows. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I got three tickets. I took my brother and I took my stepmom. My dad was supposed to go, he got sick. So I I was like I really don't want to drive to Knoxville. I really do not want to drive to Knoxville. And then my brother said, well, what about my mom? It's my half-brother. We have same dads but different moms. What about my stepmom or my mom? I said, I'll ask her. So I asked her. I was like, how would you like to do a WWE event? I said, I got a ticket. All you got to do is, I said, you drive us there. You could even drive my car. And she's like, okay. So she drove us there. We went there. And... During the, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Ric Flair steel cage match. The main oh, event. Oh man. Yeah, that was that was fucking great. Bradshaw, he was JBL was before JBL. He's still doing the cowboy hat and the boots with the bull bull rope. He went up against Oh Big, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he went up against Big Show. And then Brock Lesnar whipped the shit out of Jeff Hardy within a matter of minutes. That that was crazy. Saw Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him live. I've seen him live twice in my life. SummerSlam 2015 and 2002 at the live show, um, the live event for Raw. And who else was it? They had some other matches. Uh, they had X-Pac. He wrestled against someone who I can't remember. And I pulled up the card at one time. But right before the main event, they had a guy out there in yellow tights and yellow boots, and he was wrestling, and people were booing him, and he was putting on a hell of a match. And I noticed that. And I looked over, my brother was laughing. He goes, this guy fucking sucks. And I looked at him, I said, I said, shut up. I said, for all you know, this guy, in the next couple years, he could be a big star. And my brother's like, yeah, right. He ain't going to be nothing. Yeah, that turned out to be John Cena, and then within two years, he was like the biggest superstar in WWE. <laughs> mm, see? Yeah, that's how it happened, man. Yeah, I, I when I tell that story, people say, "Oh, you're the reason why we had to put up with John Cena for ten years." 
<laughs> nah. Because nah. I, I called it. I called it. I said, yeah, this guy, right. two or three years, going to be <clears> one of the biggest stars in WWE. And he's like, yeah. People are like, yeah, you're the reason why. <laughs> Jokingly. <laughs> but. And nah, you, you made him into a movie star and everything, too. Yeah. Yeah. I made, yeah. yeah. I called it. I called it. I said, yeah, in two, two, three years, this guy would be one of the biggest superstars in WWE. You don't know that. I was just sarcastically saying that, and bam. You know, John Cena you know, becomes a big star. <laughs> That's good, you, man. You know, so Dude, now I think about it, I've seen Brock twice, too. Oh, you have? Yeah, I saw him at um, WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, and then... I don't know, maybe a year later, he wrestled Samoa Joe at a house show. It was pretty sweet. Okay. Nice. Nice. I like that. Speaking speaking of shows, I'm looking at the posters and the promos that you sent me. You got a lot going on here coming up here pretty soon. Yeah. What what do you what do you have going on? Here pretty soon here with EHF. This month, um, we'll start off with um, we're doing a show. Well, it's with Rising. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's uh, it's with Rising Action Wrestling. Uh, so every third Friday of the month, it's uh, going to be a show called Friday Night Fire. Um, so we'll start off with that. It's going to be February 21st, I believe. Um, and that's going to be in New Baltimore, Michigan. So I'm actually going to be facing a fellow Savage Society member. Um, and his name is Hyena Hagen. So, um, and I think following that will be an event for EHF in Indiana. And then the following week will be for GLWA, and that's going to be for the tag team titles, and that's going to be in Coloma, Michigan. Okay. Yeah, so I actually have a nice couple, two-week break before that stuff, so it actually feels kind of nice, because last month was pretty busy for me, too. Yeah, I I, I seen that there. You, you've, been, you've been pretty busy. You've been been pretty busy right there and just looking at looking at the posters and stuff there with the with the upcoming events here i just amazed how how busy that you can get with the matches and stuff and yeah you mentioned that uh earlier someone mentioned that you lost the uh the tag team championships there for uh, glwa you lost the tag titles there and then yep. you and you and uh, the modern day shaman Garrett Adams. I remember you guys talking about it last time you were on, but then yeah. I I was looking forward and I said I hope the best of luck you guys you know. And then you lost them, but I hopefully I hope you guys get them back. And like you said earlier in the program, if you had to do it yourself, you got to do it yourself. You have to do get something done. I I understand that, but just looking at oh, well, getting them back. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I know that you're you're gonna get them back. Well, I don't know that though, but I want to see you get them back because you guys, you guys, when you were on the show last time, both of you, you got great chemistry there, and you both were great in ring performers and. I went back to look at some footage of you there on YouTube and I uh I'm looking for new stuff. <laughs> I'm definitely looking for some new stuff from you, man. Because I I enjoy watching what's on there, but I I said to myself, I said I gotta find out are are you gonna re- are you gonna release any new new footage or anything here yeah. in the future? See, like I barely, it's, dude, I barely ever put anything on YouTube. I don't know. I just, that honestly, I feel like I just forgot about YouTube. <laughs> um, but dude, I just put a lot of my stuff on, um, 
like my Insta- not Instagram, but a Facebook fan page. But I do, I have so much footage on like my computer and my phone right now that I have to like find time to actually upload. Right. But I think I'm going to start getting back into actually like putting stuff on, on YouTube. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely have, I definitely have plenty to put on. That's for sure. Just got to find time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool because I would I definitely I definitely love love to check out some new new stuff there and new 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 material there on YouTube because a friend of mine a friend of mine Robin Robin Nilsson he does the he does a podcast called Wrestle Popcast and he put up the video of I believe it was with Future Great Wrestling he was the one who put up the video where Adam Rose, you seen what Adam Rose looks like now? Oh yeah, yeah. He put that video up of of Adam Rose versus Brian Pillman Jr. And the damn video yeah. got fucking. Uh, you probably seen it. It got over like I forget like thousands of hits. Yeah, I definitely watched some of that video for sure. Yeah, that was that was Robin Nilsson Wrestle Popcast. He put that up. Yeah. He, yeah, he filmed it and put I it up there. I follow him too. You follow you follow yeah, him I'm too. Pretty sure I do. I actually do follow them. Russell Popcast. Yeah, yeah. Robin Robin put that up there. He was he was nice. one, Yeah, he put that up there, and I was surprised how many views and stuff I got, and I I love that, and I'd I love to see some matches with you because I. That fatal four way match when I talked about when you were on the show last time, I love that fucking match because there were so many elements and mechanics that happened yeah. in that match, man. I'm I'm about to mark out here just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, just for you, I will <laughs> go up not tonight though, of course, because I have to wake up at five in the morning, but I will definitely get some stuff up. Um hopefully by this week and I have this weekend off too so yeah devote my special time just to put that stuff up <laughs> even if you put oh, yeah, something yeah, new out stuff that I wrestling stuff like because usually I, I um like with merch and stuff in the past like I've, I've always like I dude I do all my own stuff like I do all my picture graphics all my I've done my own like past two t-shirts that i've had um my video like any kind of like video editing highlights and stuff like that i do it all pretty much yeah all myself so Uh i have work to do i got to make new highlight video new entrance video new design a new logo for my uh new merch coming out i actually have a pro wrestling tea store now i've actually had it for like two weeks but dude i'm was trying to find um because i kind of want to see like in you know out outsider's point of view as far as like logo for my merch yeah. um it's just taking a long time so it's like yeah i might as well just do one for myself too so right as soon as that's up and rolling i'm gonna get that some stuff on that store too okay okay amazing i i love it i i definitely love it and uh you're talking about someone designing some logos and stuff i know someone i can uh give you uh some contact information after the show <laughs> If you're interested, definitely shoot me the info. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I definitely can. And, uh, before, before we wrap it up here, I do want to mention, I do have an announcement about next Tuesday night on February 11th, 9 PM Eastern, 6 PM Pacific, right here on the Everett Lee Show Facebook page, and possibly, if I get it fixed on the the Podcasting Network Twitch channel, I'm going to have none other than the returning on the program, the True Master of Wrestling Ring Music, Hurricane J.J. McGuire, will be returning on to the podcast. We got something planned, something different from the normal wrestling talk, but be sure to stay tuned for that episode when it becomes available and as always you check out more Everly show around podcasty.net podcasting network your top source for independent podcast 
You can follow them over on Facebook, Podcasting Network, and send them a tweet over on Twitter at Podcasting Net. <laughs> Subscribe for video podcast portions of the Everett Lee Show and many, many more Podcasting Network shows over on YouTube, Podcasting Network, and follow them and like them over on Twitch, Podcasting Network. Everett Lee Show. Follow more of me on right here on this page, Everett Lee Show on Facebook. Send me a tweet over on Twitter at the Everett Lore Score Lee and follow me on Instagram, Everett Lee Show, and audio portions of this podcast and previous release podcast. You can find over on the YouTube channel for Everett Lee Show and Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Podbeam. So be sure to check them out as well. But before I close, where can they find the Gold Rush Solomon Stone at? And any last thing you want to say before we wrap it up here? That is a good question. I have an answer for you. You can find me on Facebook at the Gold Rush eighty three, Instagram Solomon Stone twenty two, and on Twitter Jim Tan Wrestling. Um, just wanted to say thanks. Always a pleasure coming on your show, shooting the shit about wrestling and other things. And we, will, of course, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to do it again. Anytime you want to talk wrestling or even John Cena, <laughs> give me a call. Oh, I will. I will. And as always, you can always hit me up too, man. Always hit me up. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah, definitely. Well, I will definitely get on those videos for you, my man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I do appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Appreciate <laughs> it. She'll, uh, she'll be those uh, that uh, contact info too. Oh, I will. I will. I definitely, Bye. I definitely will, man. But um, I'm gonna cue this intro outro music, and uh, we got a moment. We'll we'll talk just for a minute here. Not a All right. Everly signing off. Everyone have a good night, and I will see you again next week for another episode of the Everly Show. Peace.